This is Twit. Big news last week, AMD Ryzen. Uh, AMD brought back APU. Uh, we talked about the benchmarks on, on the Ryzen 5. And uh, Ken went nuts, right? Because the Ryzen, so one of the things, it's, it's kind of tough if you want to build an AMD Ryzen system today is, is that there's no, on the mainstream or the, the performance AMD Ryzen uh, processors, there's no graphics cores. So you can't just be like, well, I'll just use the onboard graphics until someday when the GPU prices have dropped 70%, I can afford one again. Um, you right. can't really do that. But what you can do uh, is if you want to do something sort of mid-price, you can go with an AMD uh, Ryzen, 8, uh, Ryzen 5, like a 2400G. And those actually pool the system memory and the graphics memory. So Ken's question is, it worth the money to upgrade to faster RAM? Because, of course, RAM has gotten more expensive in the last 18 months. Is it worth the additional VIG, the additional charge to move to faster RAM? Is there a definite performance uh, uh, reward to that? Yeah. And what was, uh, what was Ken's findings? The, the results are definitely noticeable, right? That first result there that looks at 3D Mark. Um, basically, there's there's four configurations tested. The bottom one is the 2200G, the slower processor uh, with 2933. Uh, 2,933 megahertz memory. Uh, but if you look at the, the top three, you've got basically the same CPU tested at 2,400, 2,933, and 3,200 megahertz memory. And you see the graphics performance scales from about 3,200 to 3,600. Uh, a, you know, a 13% jump for, um, no, let's see, 8%... For the first jump, 13 to 11% for the second jump. And obviously, you combine that, and you're getting something around 20% in total increase by moving from what we would consider the base level performance of 2400 to the higher performance memory at 3200. And if you scroll through the results, he does some testing in Ashes of the Singularity, Dirt Rally, Ghost Recon Wildlands, Civ 6, those types of things. And it's a pretty consistent performance increase, right? You know, when you right. say you're going from 20 to 23 frames per second, that's not great um, for that particular test. But in terms of a percentage, in terms of a relative shift, that's actually right. pretty impressive. You look at something like Dirt Rally 1080p, you're going from 45 to 52 frames per second simply by changing and upgrading <laughs> the memory speed <laughs> i mean we should we should want to like it's it is a significant percentage but maybe not so much that you're actually going to enjoy the difference in performance i mean i mean in that, i think in that 52? specific instance right. in that specific instance you may you know like the 20 the 20 frames per second uh, example you would probably lower your image quality set, uh, settings a little bit more to get into a more playable state obviously uh, but if we're talking about 20% performance delta, it's going to be better, right? And 20% okay. is is going to be something you, you can feel. If you're going from mid 40s to, to low to mid 50s, you know, you're basically in and out of that. You're out of the area of stutter or tearing more frequently than you would be otherwise, for example. Or okay. in another case, you may be, you know, if you adjust settings, you know, uh, for example, in Civ 6, we go from 61 to 69 frames per second, almost 70 frames per second. So now you're maybe jumping from a spot at the with the lower speed memory where you are going above and below the 60 FPS mark fairly frequently, mm -hmm. which gets you into this weird stutter profiling type of thing. Whereas maybe when you're hitting 70 on average, you never dip below 60. And it would make a significant impact on the actual user experience, even more so than the than the 12 or 15 percent you know, scaling might indicate. So there's a lot of other things that, that go into play in there. The other data point that that uh, that we ran through was single channel versus dual channel. Mm -hmm. This was interesting just from uh, an educational standpoint. If you look, the those top two metrics, that's the 2400G processor running with a single DIMM of memory versus the same processor running with two DIMMs. And you can see the, the score drops from 3600 to 2200 when you take out... That dim now for for a DIY for an enthusiast a desktop me machine, um, it's unlikely that we would see anybody do that. But if you mm -hmm. remember back into the long long days ago of 2017, where people were building budget PCs, there was often discussion about using a single dim instead of two dims. Right. In order to well, save money. Hardware secrets. I mean, it's a couple of years old now, but hardware secrets did a really interesting pretty deep dive into looking at dual channel memory and if it actually made a difference in gaming performance. Um, and in, you know, in that 
since it really didn't do a lot. Now, of course, that's two years ago. Um, you know, they and they actually found, quote, in some cases, there was actually a performance drop when the dual channel mode was enabled. Um, you know, uh, it was, yeah. it, you know, it, it was interesting to see, like, because you always think, like, you know, dual channels, I got to have all that bandwidth. And um, sometimes it doesn't this, impact it, but in this case, it did. Yeah, and this behavior is more unique to the uh, AMD side of things, especially when right. you look at integrated graphics, right? So the integrated graphics on an AMD processor greatly changes performance profile mm -hmm. from single channel to, to dual channel or even memory frequency, as we see here in the story as well. Intel's integrated graphics does not scale in the same way. It just doesn't. Um, they just have a different bottleneck on their internal systems compared to what AMD could do, you know? Um, so... You know, the the interesting thing when you brought up pricing at the beginning is memory is expensive no matter what speed right. you're looking at. You know, when we were first doing our testing of the 2400G, there was a noticeable difference in performance between or noticeable difference in price between the 2400 and uh, 3200 megahertz memory. However, mm -hmm. I think as we published this story... It was down to maybe twenty or thirty dollars difference between getting right. uh, eight or sixteen gigs of twenty four hundred versus thirty two hundred. And if that's the case, you know that price delta would probably tell me that yeah, you should probably just just pay for the added memory speed, get that added performance. Although, uh, even all that being said, the idea of paying one hundred eighty dollars for memory for a one hundred eighty dollar processor to then use integrated graphics seems off putting, but only because prices in general are just so high. There's no alternative for this right. platform. Um, there's nothing anybody, AMD or any other consumer, would be able to do about it until one day in the magical future when memory prices don't suck so much.